Good morning, this is Judy and Chris from Artistic Artifacts, and we are in Alexandria, Virginia, and um, we've already had a really great morning. <laughs> um, I've been, I'm usually pretty transparent with you guys about the um, ups and downs of, of being a small business owner, and um, you know, a, it, it's, a, it's an interesting journey that I think I've been on my whole entire life. And, um, you know, we, we talked about some of the technical problems and, and we'll inside the building, and then you have plumbing problems and nobody to clean the bathroom, or you have to vacuum the floor and all that kind of stuff. But we had a new one today. <laughs> we couldn't get in the building. So, um, we, you know, you have a couple problems with things, and it worked for me for two days. <laughs> I thought for sure it would work for me this morning, but it didn't. So, um, it, you know, sometimes the entry doors are just don't open for you. So well, we thought we were going to end up doing Facebook, <laughs> Facebook Live, Live on, on the, the porch. porch. <laughs> Live. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, another day in paradise, as my husband puts it. And the other thing we're saying is, you know, you can't can't leave home without your sense of humor, and it does really make things better when you do have your sense of humor. And realize that you might be panicking at the moment because you can't get in the building. But then the other side of it is, I know my quilts are secure and my inventory is secure because nobody can get to them. So anyway, that was our fun for this morning. Um, a couple of important announcements besides being locked out of the building is that um, we have up and ready... Um, a Scott Fortunoff's visit. Um, we are still working on the links for you guys to go to the hotels. I know that we've had some phone calls. And we're working on it. You know, they won't give us a link until I sign the contract and da-da-da. It's coming. It's coming. I promise you. Um, we're very excited and happy that everybody's planning this trip early. Um, we are really looking forward to that. We're also working on hotels for our um, Creative Summit. We will have links for that as well as soon as the contracts are signed by everybody. Well, I think the other thing that was exciting was we got a list yesterday of um, from Free Spirit of the quilts. Yes, we'll have we did. our truck trunk show, and there were some awesome quilts. Yeah. I went to look at them online oh, yesterday. Did you? Oh, I didn't oh, get time. Yeah. 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 So um, they are sending. It was probably fifteen, at yeah. least fifteen quilts. Um, there are five or six cave quilts. There's a couple Tim Holtz. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> there's a Denise Burkett one with her new line that's oh, coming out. Awesome. Um, with, I think it's called Island Escape or something like that. It's really cool. But the 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 quilts were, were the pretty list awesome. I, yeah, yes. I skimmed the list and saw the names. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so yeah, awesome. Yeah, so I went and started looking yeah. at them. Yeah. And it's like, ooh. Yeah. yeah. Javtex has a lot of fabrics, a, a lot of lines. It's a very prominent industry in the business. But we tend to go to the free spirit fabrics And they were the all most. free spirit yeah, And they're all free spirit. Um, yeah. So that's part of the evening event. So those that's what requires a ticket. Um, and we will have that as part of the event with myself and Scott. So please join us. It's, it's going to be a great time. Well, uh, the other thing, I, just to go along with the event, is that part of the proceeds of the ticket mm -hmm. um, will go for Food for Others, which is a um, Fairfax County food bank, uh, not-for-profit. And I was on their site this morning, and um, I know people know in the news that there are some decreased benefits for SNAP and other people who have food insecurities. So contributions, yeah. both it, through the buying the ticket, but bringing food or making additional contributions will be critical to our community where right. it's hard to believe we're a wealthy community, we think, and yet there's you know a lot of people, people who are, are food insecure. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's an important part of the evening. Yes. yes. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, the other thing that we have going on right now is on our uh, app, which you download from your phone, and there's instructions on our website, there is a bolt sale. And I think, I don't know, they, they snuck some Australian in there, didn't they? Yeah, I think... Um 
a whole bolt of Australian at 30% off. These four bolts are just a, a couple of the Australian ones that are in there. There's CAFE, there's TILDA, and these there's are, interface. They're new designs. These are, you know, it's overstock. It's not like these aren't the, the old stuff we're trying to get no, rid no. of. These this are new designs. Um, and we also have um, on there, not as part of the sale, are some boutique panels, which we might show mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. that that use um, the Australian fabric. Right, right. I, a lot of fa Australian fabric with my boutique panels, too. But I know it, you do, too. And it, in addition to um, the kind of the good fabric lines, there's also some Kona solids, there's some blenders, and there's a, a number of stabilizers. Stabilizer, yeah. Um, it's a great price. Yeah. It's absolutely is a great price. So um, it's our thirty percent off bolt sale. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. and then at the end of the month, our uh, live sale, which will be Japanese, and um, we have piles and boxes of Japanese fabrics we're going through. So we'll we'll send you some teasers on that too. So any other announcements you can think of? I think I got them. I all think that's that. it. That's right. enough. To yeah, have I know. Being Kyle. locked out. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Kyle, there's there any questions so far? No. Uh, Linda Snow says she wish she could come for Scott's visit. That's well, funny. she can. <laughs> <laughs> she knows how to get here. She knows how to get her. Her car is on. It's a auto mode, uh, auto, automatic mode. I think she has some place she could stay. She, she does. There's to. always a place for her to stay. So <laughs> hear that, Linda? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So one of the things, and, and Chris has traveled with me for quite a long time doing shows as well, as well as now in the store, um, we get questions a lot about some of the items that we sell. It's like, what do I do with this? I love it. I, they come in and buy it, and it's like, well, I have this collection of Aboriginal-inspired fabrics. What do I do with it? I'm like, well, just pick a pattern. If you want to do a quilt, just pick a pattern. And they're like, what, what? I said, it all goes together. It all goes together. So now I think, and I think this is probably t to a period of larger motifs in the fabrics lately, that some of the patterns have become bigger pieces. This is, it's, it's, this is Dudley's piece that she did. And uh, we'll talk a little bit. It's a blue onion pattern, and we do have the pattern online. But you can see there's chunks, so you really get to see the pattern. So there's that idea of using big blocks, I would say. Well, and that's, I think, one of the things we brought this back is when you're looking at the bolt, you don't see how much is going on yes. in this piece. Um, so it really, there are a lot. They are original, ab aboriginal art. Yes. That they work with the artist for designs and then they translate the designs into the colors um, to make the fabric. But again, there, there really are... This is a pattern that's been around for 15 years. This is a pattern that's been around for 15 years also. And you just can see all of the colors in it and as Chris exactly said, it has the those, artists. Those clothes. So, I was thinking... Yeah, these are... So this actually shows where... That's a different fabric, this, but th yeah. But it's a similar fabric is how somebody's used the fabrics. This is a little ch child's outfit of shorts and a top, but you don't need to use the whole piece. Um, mm -hmm. You can use bits and pieces of it. Here's the other one. Didn't get the buttons on it. Child grew up before you got the buttons. <laughs> <laughs> That's normally what happens. The fabric sells out before I get the sample made. Yes. So, yeah. It, I mean, it's a. What's nice about it is it's a nice size cot. I mean, it's, it's a, a nice, wonderful cot. It has a nice drape, so it is good for garments. Mm -hmm. um, and we have many customers who come back in and they've worn, they've made shirts, men's shirts, I was women's say, shirts. I think Harry's made several men's button-down yep. shirts, very yep. tailored-looking shirts. And I think Andy has too. Yes, yeah, yeah. you know, absolutely awesome patterns. Oh, rayon, rayon. Yes, for and that's something that's new. Sharon just reminded us because we didn't bring you a sample of that. Um, we do have several patterns that are in a rayon. This is something that's new for M&S Textiles. So, um, you know, 
you vote vote with your dollars. So if you want rayon and you're interested in it, these are really great patterns. Yeah, a lot of garments. So we're so asking us for asking it. Us for it. Um, I know we still have it. So please um, look, take a look at that. That's really great. So honestly, big pieces I think are really nice, but I do everything scrappy because I don't have a plan ever. I never have a plan. So this piece I did a long time ago, and I, it came out of a Bonnie Hunter uh, book very early on. And it was it, foundation piece. Foundation right? piece. And again, I had never done that before, so I thought I would try it, and I had all these scraps. So you um, drew a line here and here, and we did fabrics this way. And as you can see, these are small pieces, so you're not seeing the big piece of it, but you do get to see the color. And then it's a neutral here and here. And um, so I was really proud of myself that I got the star to work. The backing is, you know, coordinates with the front. It's an Australian, I think it's sweet potato was one of yeah, those. Yeah, it's a and the, one we don't have anymore, I don't think. Right, no. But also great patterns to quilt from the back. If you're, you know, right. new to free motion, it's a good way to practice your free motion. I think it's always a good way to yeah. look at the pattern that you have for free motion. Um, and use the fabric to tell you where you want your stitches. I think that that's just great. Um, here is, uh, Chris has done some bags. So these are two bags. I had actually made uh, this pattern before. It's, let me take it out of the, so you can actually see it. It's called the braided tote quilt as you go. I don't braid the handle, that's what the braided part is. But what I took home was one roll, and the, the rolls are 20 pieces. So I used half of the roll and what else did you take? a three-piece um, a three piece fat quarter bundle. So I took, um, or no, three half yard cuts in that, in the pattern. So that's what I took home last week. This is a quilt as you go. I used half the strips. Okay, and that, what's nice is that is a small jelly roll. A lot of the jelly rolls are 40 yeah. strips, so. So I used half of it for this bag. That's great. And then I used the three um, half yards. I added pockets, which um, I don't know that there were pockets, or maybe there was one pocket, but inside. I added two pockets inside. And then w instead of braiding, that. I don't really like the braids, but I had okay. a piece of webbing, mm -hmm. and then I just covered the webbing with one of the strips, and then stitched, stitched it down, it down okay. top stitched it down. That's nice because the webbing adds some strength to it. If you were just to do, a, you know, roll over two pieces of fabric, it wouldn't yeah. be as strong. Yeah. So. So I had leftover fabric, <laughs> and I like this pattern, which is the um, Casey Stevens. I can't see where to open this one, so I will leave it closed. It's the wide strap cross body bag, which we just, I, I receded those patterns in. So okay. we have got all our rice pouch and round bottom and everything. So these are the, the fabrics that are in the pocket. Then I stripped the rest of my strips together. Oh. <laughs> and that's my lining. We never waste any fabric, do you? No. no. There's a few strips left that you can have. <laughs> this one again, I added a pocket. And the same thing, I modified the handle. Again, I used webbing. She says to use some batting, but I, I had I, a piece I, of webbing. I, I, and then um, just use some of the leftover fabric. So I got two, two projects, two bags out of... That amount of fabric, that's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we've had plenty of customers I who... I do this. like that one, I love it. It's cool, it's a great pattern too. Yeah. By Annie, we have customers who um, are creating by any bags and several have come in we show those on our um, Facebook page so artistic artifacts has a group page that's called creative minds and that's a place as, a, as part of the community um, it is a private group uh, you're gonna if get in there we we have a challenge every month right now it's show us your workspace mm -hmm. and um, show your space show your space and and it's a, you so you post some pictures and hashtag it and it gets you into the running for a $25 gift certificate and it's also you know oh I have this fabric what do you suggest or does somebody like this pattern have you made it show us type of thing so it's a community 
for um, the people all over the world belong to it. Well, and then we we post, um, you know, people come in with show and tell when they mm -hmm. come in and looking for a quilt backing, or I mean, Lawrence was here the other yeah, day with his yeah. two quilts. He's got a, he's a new um, Bernina Q20 20 owner, um, and he was just so proud to show, not, I mean, oh, the art of it was beautiful, but yeah. the quilting was also beautiful, so yeah. yeah. Um, we did mention clothing a little bit earlier, so this is Natasha's cute little dress. She has two daughters who are frequently their, um, her models. She's on Instagram? Instagram and, um, Face and Facebook. Uh, yeah. with, what is she under? I'll have to look we'll have to look it up, but she's frequently in our Creative Minds group. And, then and her girls are growing it, up, so she's, dro she's making bigger dresses, but this one's just, and so it's two. Two, two Australian pattern, yeah. patterns, yeah. yeah. And then Jen, who works with us in operations, she loves these funky pants where she's combining some um, Aboriginal and some batik, batik yeah. together. So Yeah, they're just she's, she's summer, summer crop pants that are great. Um, let's see. This piece is... Um, from Sally Ann Morrison. She had created this and donated it to the shop. She was working on some patterns, which um, she is a primarily an art quilter. And so this is called Leaves from the Quilted Symphony. That's a book that I thought was really fun with um, using the, the Australian. And then what else do we, oh, we have a rice bag. We have a rice bag. With Sashiko. <laughs> With Sashiko surprise, on it. Surprise, surprise. So Chris rice is bag. queen of, of the rice bags. I gave up on rice bags. I have no idea. They're not that hard. I just can't wrap my head around it. So this is a Sashiko piece that was done um, that we have patterns for. And we have lots of threads, different colors and stuff. And then um, used... Yeah, so okay. this is one of the Australian. And then to embellish this piece, I put some misty fuse on part mm -hmm. of the design and cut it out. So by having a fusible on it, you can cut it out. So I embellished the sashiko with some of the Australian fabric, but this, I think we have it in three colorways. Yes, and that's it's a very a, popular. It's one of my favorite it's ones. It's been around for, that again, another There's a pink years. and this, and then there's a black yeah. one. Yeah, so that one is a good two. Um, let's, this quilt here, Chris, this is Disappearing Nine Patch, is that right? I think it's the leftover blocks from the disappearing nine patch. <laughs> oh, it could have been. Yes. <laughs> but so, and I'm really good at the idea of making up your own block, which I think is great Actually, here. it is the disappearing is nine patch. It's just cut a different way. Oh. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, so the disappearing nine patch, and this, what I used for this was um, the purple version of the 10 inch squares. You cut them into five inch squares. You use your, these in the corner, I used a black and white in the center, and then I used white in the, so you have a nine patch square, the white is in the middle piece and the others are the cornerstone okay. in the black. And then there are multiple ways. Um, when I did it, I just Googled nine, you know, nine disappearing, yeah, nine patch. disappearing nine patch has been out there for a long time. There's all kinds of ways. I don't know that there's, even a pattern you can buy. No. There's lots of ways to say if you cut it this way, you get this design. If you oh. cut it, and then it's how you place your blocks. It's a fun one to do. Yeah, we had. And this one, I think I can com combine. This is some cherry wood. Yes. Yeah, cherry wood that has that really faux suede look. I don't know how she does it. It's top secret, but it's really some nice fabric. So, um, and then this one is another scrappy quilt that I did. So wh when I say take any pattern, I mean, here's a log cabin. Log cabin's been around for a really long time. Uh, it's what I would call a very traditional pattern, but you can do all kinds of things. I mean, I don't, my strips are never the same size. I, I don't do that. I make, I square up my blocks after I've d done them all, but you can see, you know, it just depends on what the strip is, is how large it is. It's all scrappy. And it's a log cabin. It's a basic log cabin. Um, Which is what you've got. Yeah, this one is when I did my um, 
when I had gone to on a retreat with a couple of friends, they had all these plastic boxes and they were just sewing blocks together and making quilts. And I'm like, how are you finishing all these tops? And they said, well, because we put them in a box and we add to them. So this one is here and I think I made this up. I'm not sure, I but what you use the paper think, piece. <laughs> the phone, the phone directory. <laughs> yep. Um, and then, you know, this is going to go here. So those are foundation piecing. And then what I did, you can, this is not finished. I took them and I made. Oh my God, you worked on that last year. I know. I have been working on it for a long time. Well, but at least I got them all in a box now. So I just, as I keep telling everybody, I'm learning quilting backwards. I just love this second pattern that's created by this. And I could change them, but I think that they're so yeah, you use them half square triangles, but yeah. with um, with just But then you look here and it gives, yeah. yeah. That would be the official terminology yes. for it. <laughs> Which I can't find. It's the quilter terminology. This is the quilter terminology. Actually, I didn't want to do yeah. this. Yeah. So um, I've just used some. And then I did some, what did I do? This was a different block I did because of course this is what I had. I had those funky people that look like aliens. And so I kind of like the black and white, but, and again, this is just scraps. I very rarely um, am able to complete a quilt start to finish with a new, you know, pattern or a I new collection. I gave you a bag of scraps. You did. <laughs> from, from my <laughs> projects. <Yeah. laughs> so that's what I get most of the time. Yeah. But again, I, I like you're making this big part of this pattern and it's consistently black and white, but it's all scraps and, and that's generally how I do mine. So It's nice to use your scraps up as you go and then be able to then take it and say, okay, how do you put it in? Or even if you don't put it together like this, is to make it improv and you've got some other yeah. smaller blocks or something in there. In there yeah, too, which is options. generally how I how work. You work. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, all right. The other thing um, I wanted to show was some of the fabrics are really great when you're looking at them. I think Judy's got this fabric in here. I oh, love that fabric, that's my favorite. Yes, it's my favorite too is when you look at this, you could look at it as a whole piece, but you can also, you can fussy cut your strips. So you, you're getting lots of different options out of this one piece yeah. of fabric. So, you know, you can get this, or you want the rickrack look, or you want this, you need a small wedge. So this fabric has lots of potential to it. Well, and I like doing it as a border and not doing it this way, but doing it this that way. That you get so all you get the yeah. stripes or the lines in it, I think. Is so th this is another one similar is, it has a lot going on, it's stripes, but you can cut it different ways. And so that's actually what I did, this piece I'm working on. Oh, look at those beads. So I had and some shots. strips left of this fabric. So I cut them because I thought this blue just kind of set That's this so off. That's so awesome. That is beautiful. So it's it's a work in progress. I'm stitching using my tulip needles. Some tulip needles. My K Buckley perfect scissors, scissors. My little project bag with all my threads, and I've got I'm using a lot of different threads. So I've got Eleganza. I've got some spaghetti. You have aurafil in there. That's I've got weight. some aurafil, yeah. mm -hmm. and of course I've got some painters threads. Yeah. And so it is a work in progress. Um, that's a cute little bag. It works. And yeah. You have, yeah. That's from India. It's one of the new ones. Yeah, I think. it's on the online. Online. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I just. Um, and of course I've got lots. Of French, French knots. knots. <laughs> but it's fun. Did you stitch this? Oh, yeah, she stitched this. And then I did the buttonhole stitch on oh, this. Oh, wow, that's great. And you've been talking about using three, four French yeah. knots. Yep. So I got some three, and I've got some beads in there. Oh, it's just wonderful. I need to do the cat. But, again, these are our, our Indonesian panels. Look how nice they go. It's just, I, I do, I that's my go-to fabric for those. So I really do a lot with 
the batik panels and the Australian. So our previous comment sold. So comment sold is our app where we sell on our app. So our previous comment sold, we had put some kits together and they're still there. So if you go on the app, you can find and then what we did is we selected some fabrics to go with it. And what this we wanted to show is you don't need to just say, I'm using Australian, right. which, you know, Dudley did in this. This is Marcia Durr's palette. This is a collection of fabrics that just really go well with this. Mm -hmm. So this one is on the comments sold as two women in the garden. And I think there's two of those kits. Mm -hmm. And this is a very, I mean, I can't, this artist has retired, so when we sell out of his panels, which is Jaka, J-A-K-A, -A, um, that we have, we will not be able to get any more of those. So um, don't hesitate, is, is I guess what I'm saying. Here's another one that's Jaka as well. This is two women with a bird. I love the birds. He does really cool birds. And this one we've got... This is a nice combination. I had a lot of fun curating these. This, this so this fun. one's got Indonesian fabric, Australian fabric, and a Deer Stella blender, but look at how well those go with that. And then we have, again, whether you're doing, and oftentimes when I do mine, I've put a piece of felt, look at my wonderful stitch. <laughs> I put a f piece of felt on the back when I'm doing my hand stitching. It gives me, I mean, somebody asked me, do I use a hoop? I don't, mm -hmm. but this gives me enough stability to work on. Right. For this one, I didn't do it, but often if I was doing this one, I'd put it on the felt, and I would do some machine mm -hmm. free motion quilting to start with, to major outlines you, on the felt, I do whatever hand embellishment. I then put my bat batting on, and I would go th back and do some more machine quilting because then you're getting texture. You're getting depth, and you're, it, yes. when you stitch on one place, it, yeah, I mean the it stitching. Affects what happens next to it? Yeah. That's one thing. So the stitching does, um, you know, on the felt does give you some of that texture, but that added bit really right, uh, makes right. a difference. And the, the biggest thing and that is you're holding the three layers together when you're doing the machine stitching, and you definitely want to do that before you add um, some of your embellishments because going back after your embellishments are on there is a little tricky, and I don't suggest it. <laughs> and the other thing I don't do is I don't put my backing on until I'm all finished. But then, and then you, you then I do a pillowcase yep. or a facing. Yeah. Because what I don't want is I don't want this to show on the back. Right. Um, and oftentimes I might. I when I bead, I actually do the whole three layers together, stitch it, and then I bead. I just don't go all the way through. Okay, because I was going to say if you put like a batik backing on, then forget it. Yeah, you're not um, going to be able to stitch anymore. Yeah. And this is a, one of the other kits that's on there. Totally different artist. <clears throat> this one is uh, Fish Batik Panel by Harry Agoon. Those colors are just so rich and bright. I don't, these, these panels are very, very bright that came in. They're wonderful. And we have a couple of these. So, um, but look at these Australian with this. I mean, that's one of the new designs. This yeah. is a Dear Stella. Stella. This might be on on the bold. I can't <gasps> read it. Really? This or the darker one, okay. yes. And then there's another Australian. But look at those with that panel. Yeah. And this is another one that I like to go like this with it. So it's, you know, you have, and, and you can play with how much of it you let go. How much do you want to show? This can change. But I, a lot of times I'm going to turn this so it's this way rather than that way. Either way works. It's just what I do. Yeah, and this, I mean, this is another this is, example of. You know, you can make those borders as large as you want. I mean, you can cut this, yep. that your your borders are only this part, mm -hmm. or this part, or actually this part. 
So there's, a, you know, again, lots yep, of lots um, of opportunity yeah. to, to pick the part of the fabric that you like. And I think you have a class coming up on petite I panel. I do. Clouds. I do. We have a couple of classes coming up. So Blue Onion will be on the website soon. We're, we're working on dates for that. And that's going to be this fabric with um, this pattern out of any fabric that you would like. I think she's working Dudley. on another sample. She is working on another sample. So that will be there. And then I have a class that is working with a petite panel. And that's on the website now. So that's available for you to sign up on. So we're starting some in-person Classes. And that's, th that class is actually a um, design class. It's a little bit of just what we did is mm -hmm. you've got this panel. This is what you want. What do you, how do you want to work with it? What, pa so Judy talks you through, you bring fabrics and how do you use your own fabrics or how do you pick fabrics right. in the store? To work with it. How do you decide? How are you going to embellish it? How big do you want it? How yep. are you going to embellish it? Um, so it's m much more of a design class mm -hmm. than a walk out of the store with a finished finish quilt, yeah. especially if you want to do any embellishment. Right. It's, r it's really much more the basics of... And having sat through um, a couple of them, I think I observed one, it was absolutely amazing to see... I mean, I just uh, came up with the, yeah. the first thing I think of is like Marlene, and yeah. Marlene had some old fabrics in her stash. They worked perfectly. Perfect. Yeah. So it was really fun to to watch people in the class have that aha moment and say, "Oh, if I did this, or I right. could use it this way rather than oh, how am I going to cut this up?" And it, it just doesn't go with that. Right. It's really exciting to see what they they. There's been many pieces that have just been fantastic that have come out of the class, and it's really nice. Yeah. And they're all different. They're all different. It's all different. So. Are we, any questions, Kyle? No, no <coughs> People tuning in, enjoying the uh, the uh, grouping of the fabrics and the thread. Yeah. Okay. Well, they're on Comet Sold. Sold. They're available on the Comet Sold. Mm -hmm. They are not part of the thirty percent. Um, no. Bolts. But they are available. Anything on Comet Sold, Sold, you can you can select. Right. Um, and there when is we say Comment Sold, there's the app. It's free shipping over 75. So Comment Sold app, live sale. So we have a live sale that we come and talk about what the products are. We leave them up there so you can shop it at any time. And then we have periodic sales like what's going on now with the bolts. But it is our Artistic Artifacts yes. app. So you can go on Google or Apple and just put in Artistic Artifacts and you'll see the apple pop up, mm -hmm. and yeah. um, you can find all the products that are on there. Yep. And I think the final thing would be, j yes. Sorry, we did get one question okay. while you were, were talking about that. Uh, choosing between felt, uh, felt batting and flannel, how do you choose? Um, I don't think it, I, it's, it's interchangeable. I think it's what you have. Yeah. I like the felt just because it's a little bit thicker than a, a piece of flannel, but either one. And then I use flannel. It's really, yeah, it's, 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 and it's interchangeable. It's, and part of mine is just what's in my studio. Mm -hmm. the, and the reason you don't want to use batting is because you're going to get bearding. So if it you're, does. and bearding is when you're pulling your hand needle through, you're going to get little fuzz from your batting. So you don't want that to happen. And the fabric's not thick enough to um, just do it by itself. By itself. Right. Yeah. You need some stability. But I, I buy felt kind of like by the yard um, mm -hmm. or by the two yards, and it's just there. I need a piece. I just cut it up. Yeah. Yeah. What and then the is? last thing I, um, I think is next week we're together again. <laughs> We are. We're together. It's live. the Judy and Chris show. Um, we're live again next week. Um, we actually will talk about our quilts that are in Leslie Riley's new book that's coming out. It will be released on April 25th, so mm -hmm. just a couple weeks. And we um, have it on pre order, so you can We have order it on pre order. Now. I actually got a confirmation from Leslie this morning that she is sending you and I our Copy. signed copies. Yep. So we will have a copy to show you, Ugh. but we're going to talk about our quilts and how we um, use them as, and call them memory quilts. Right. So it's f using photo transfers and um, completely different. Right. And Leslie has a podcast too, and I'm 
not quite sure when she's launching that, but she's talked to each artist who has a piece in there and talked to them about the piece and how they did it and why they did it. Yeah, and, she, and she allowed me, I, we talked a lot about artistic artifacts too and because Leslie's known me since I started as well. And yeah, it so was a it nice really chat. Was nice. Yeah, it was a nice chat. A nice so conversation I don't know how with her. she, I don't know how she edits them down, but <laughs> the other thing is Leslie will actually be here in person teaching, teaching two class. Crowd. She's going to, we've got two classes yes, for her. Yes, we do. One in July and it's actually how to work with your photos for a, a photo memory quilt, and then the other one is actually more of a, a design. design. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. right. And we, we have lots and lots of questions, again, in the store about how do I work with my picture. So this is a great opportunity to come and work with a um, internationally known artist. So we're really, really lucky that Leslie lives close by. <laughs> and she has a friend I think she stays with when yes. she's in town. So yes. Yeah, she yes. does. Okay, we'll see you All next right. week. Yep. Bye. Have a creative day.